Mikel Arteta's project at Arsenal in the past couple of seasons is starting to come together and one of the things that has always stood out is his ability to coach through the bigger games. Despite finishing 8th in back-to-back -back Premier League seasons since taking over in December of 2019, only Manchester City have won more games against the Big Six than Arteta's side, and this aspect of his management and coaching has been evident ever since he won the FA Cup within his first few months of his tenure, beating Manchester City in the semi and Chelsea in the final to win his first piece of silverware. Therefore, it is no surprise how good they've been in this season's big games, and when looking at the head-to-head -head record between the traditional Big Six teams, plus Brighton, West Ham, Aston Villa and Newcastle, the Gunners clean up. They've conceded the least goals, shots, shots on target, expected goals, non-penalty expected goals, shots facing the box and opposition touches in the box. So how has Arteta developed his Arsenal team to compete so well in the bigger games? To understand Arteta's big game approach, we need to rewind to the FA Cup semi-final against Manchester City in 2020. Going into this game, Arsenal would beat Liverpool 2-1 at home three days earlier. And interestingly, not one of the 11 players who started that day are registered in the squad for the start of the 23-24 campaign, highlighting the huge transformation at the club over the last four years. Arteta approached this game using a 3-4-3 shape, with Kieran Tierney as a left centre half, and Ainsley Maitland-Niles as the left wing back. And right from the off, Mikel Arteta's out of possession tactical knowledge was already shining through. In the front three, he used Alexandra Lacazette to man mark Manchester City's deeper midfielder, which was Ilkay Gundogan. And from here, he used Pierre Enrico Bamiang and Nicolas Pepe as narrow wingers to stand on the ball side of each of the centre halves which caused massive problems for City. They struggled to play through the centre because of this strict man-marking trap that Arsenal had on the midfield, and when they attempted to clip the ball over the top of the press to the full-backs who were left open, Arsenal's wing-backs aggressively stepped out to keep City pinned back. Arsenal didn't want to press City incredibly high in this game, they just wanted to stifle their build-up and keep their possession within their own third. He sacrificed ball control over the game to have a solid enough off-the-ball structure. The Gunners finished the game with 29% of the ball, taking only 4 shots, but limited Pep Guardiola's Sky Blues to just 1 shot on target, and this is put into perspective when you realise that Manchester City have only had 1 or fewer shots on target 10 times throughout Pep Guardiola's 458 competitive games in charge, with Mikel Arteta being the only manager on this list to do it more than once. Even though Arsenal didn't press as aggressively as they do now, they still wanted to use the ball when they had it, and the desire and persistence to build out from the defence was rewarded in their opener. In possession, they shifted to more of a back four, with Tierney pushing on into a more natural left-back position from left centre-back. This meant that they could commit Maitland-Niles into more of a forward area, pinning Manchester City's press backwards. This meant that they could build out in a 4-2 shape, and they used shorter and fast passes to entice the Manchester City press and play directly through it via the full-backs, managing to drag the pressing shape from the left to the right, and ultimately to create a 2v1 on the the right hand side which would get Arsenal their opener. You could say the ideas especially in the bigger games were already there and this game was just one of Arteta's three wins against Pep Guardiola in all competitions to this day with the other two coming in this campaign with the Community Shield penalty shootout and the 1-0 win at the Emirates earlier on this season. Guardiola has beaten his protege nine out of the 12 times that these two have met. So could he actually go to the Etihad and get something? Quite possibly. But moving further down the line, in the 21-22 season, Arsenal would lose 7 out of their 10 Premier League games against the traditional Big Six, and it would prove costly as they missed out on Champions League football by just 2 points. They had a lot of mountains to climb, but it was somewhat understandable at this point. In the 21-22 season, they had the youngest average age squad in the league by a considerable margin and their inexperience and ill-discipline against the bigger teams was evident. Only Everton had more players sent off in this season than Arsenal. Gabriel was shown a second yellow card at 1-1 in a game that they were on top of against Manchester City at home, which they ended up losing 2-1. Rob Holden received a second yellow card and was sent off at 1-0 in a crucial six-pointer against Tottenham Hotspur away, which they went on to lose 3-0. Granit Xhaka was sent off twice, first in a 5-0 defeat at Manchester City, then in the 20th minute against Liverpool in in the Carabao Cup, which they would then go on to draw 0-0. Arsenal would go on to drastically improve this form against the Big Six in the 2022-23 Premier League season, going from winning 9 points to 19 points out of a maximum of 30. 
But how did Arteta manage to take this big of a leap? Well, in their 3-2 win against Manchester United, their improvement both in and out of possession was evident. As soon as the ball is turned over by themselves in possession, they had a set structure ready to counter-press and forced Manchester United into a corner leaving them with only one option, to clear the ball. Arsenal took the throw in quickly, and despite being in the 89th minute, they were able to compose themselves, reset their attacking structure in a 2-4-4, and start to play again, dragging Manchester United's defence from the right side to the left, and then leaving a 2v1 overload on that side. Similar to the Aubameyang goal that we analysed before, the same principles, the same outcome, but more tactical and technical refinement. And the biggest change he would make, which we've just seen, would be the sheer amount of emphasis he puts on winning duels. Whether that was shown off in Arsenal's most complete form this season, having the current highest percentage of dribblers tackled in the Premier League, or it's shown off in their recruitment, signing players like Declan Rice and Kai Havertz. Mikel Arteta is looking for controlled, compact and structured chaos. From a management perspective, all you want to do is bend the possibility of winning these quote-unquote chaotic moments by building a team that thrives in these situations and that is exactly what he's been able to do. In comparison to every full season he's had at the Emirates, there's been a continuous progression season on season in their defensive metrics. This season per game they're having the most defensive actions full stop and despite wanting this much defensive output, this is their best season for goals conceded, expected goals conceded, shots faced, dual win success rate, aerial win success rate and opposition touches in their box. And even though he is often compared to his mentor Pep Guardiola, there are so many different aspects of their coaching. Still, the main one is the difference in how they defend. Even though Guardiola has adjusted his squad profile in recent years to suit the physical demands of the Premier League, he has always stood by controlling the game and limiting the amount of defensive actions his team has to make. This angle of Pep Guardiola's coaching in Mikel Arteta's eyes makes him theoretically a defensive coach. Arsenal have failed to win at the Etihad in the Premier League since 2015, when Arsene Wenger managed the club. But could Arteta's big game record lead them to a crucial three-point points or will his mentor Pep Guardiola get the better of him in a title defining game once again?